The governor-elect of Adama State, Ahmadu Fintiri, says he will see to it that the embattled resident electoral commissioner, Hudu Ari, and his accomplices in the supplementary elections are prosecuted and sent to jail. Fintiri said this moment after he picked up his certificate of return alongside other members-elect of the National Assembly at the INEC headquarters in Abuja. A rice correspondent, Omo Bazwai, tells us more. After ending the debacle in the governorship supplementary election at Damawa State, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has presented a certificate of return to the governor elect, Amadou Fitiri, and his running mate. <laughs> Fitiri arrived at INEC headquarters at exactly 4 30 pm, accompanied by his wife and members of his People's Democratic Party, PDP. The certificate of return confirms his hard-earned victory at the end of a dramatic supplementary election that brought him head-to-head -head with his closest challenger and candidate of the All-Progressive Congress APC, Aishatu Dahiru Binani. Fitri admits it's his toughest election yet while dedicating the victory to God and Adamawa people. The victory means a lot of things for me. It means that uh, our people believe in us. We won the election with them. And uh, we're going to double our effort, supported by my able deputy, the professor, and the former vice chancellor, to see that we continue on the right trajectory that we have uh, started in the state, giving our people excellent infrastructure. The election in Adamawa had moved swiftly from normal to controversial after the resident electoral commissioner, Hudu Yunisa Hari, hurriedly declared APC candidate Binani winner and governor-elect, even when coalition was yet to be concluded, knowing fully well that he lacked the powers to make such a declaration. Einek had promptly disowned Hudu's action and recommended his arrest before it returned to Ademawa to complete the process that eventually produced Fintiri as the winner. Hudu should be prosecuted and I believe I'm the right person to prosecute him because he committed the offense in Adama and I'm sure I'm going to prosecute him along with the security chiefs that committed those offenses with him because they ought to have been the one to protect democracy. Earlier, INEC had also presented certificates of return to winners of last Saturday's National Assembly supplementary elections in different parts of the country. Former Senate leader Yaya Abdullahi and the winner of Zamfara Central Senatorial District, Aliu Ibra Biobis, were among the senators elect who picked their certificates of return. It's a victory for democracy and it's a victory for all of us. We in Nigeria, particularly in Zamfara State and Zamfara State Central. So they don't mind my voice. Seven majority leader of the House of Representatives, Halasan Dogoa, was also among the members elect that received their certificate of return. What it means to me is that I'm proud of my people. What it means to me is that I'm thankful to God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has once again given me the mandate of the people to continue to represent them on the floor of the House of Representatives. It's really a very great thing, and I'm proud of it. We are able to move bills and motions. We'll continue with those bills and motions that I get towards good governance in Nigeria. With this presentation, INEC officially runs off the 2023 general elections in Nigeria. Omo Bazwai Arise News. And President-elect Bola Tinubu has called on the police to investigate the controversy that trails the Adamawa supplementary election. In a statement, Tinubu also urged aggrieved candidates to pursue legitimate means of addressing their grievances. He congratulated Adamawa Governor Amadou Fintiri and Kebi Governor-elect Nasser Idris for their victory at the polls and called on all elected officials to prepare to serve Nigerians. Well, the president-elect has spoken. Mr. K, your thoughts? Well, um, I'm not sure. Was it the president that said, the president-elect that spoke, or it was a statement? A statement, well, a statement was issued. Uh, because yesterday I was monitoring to see if there was uh, any indication that the president-elect is back in the country. Uh, we know that the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is back from uh, Umrah. 
And um, a lot of people did say something along the lines of um, nobody saw the president-elect there and nobody saw him in uh, uh, France or London. So there is that question being asked. But a statement by those who work with the president is a statement that is approved by the president-elect, rather. So I guess that's a good statement. It is worthwhile to say there should be a probe, and I think so too. Um, from everything that I have seen so far, it's obvious that there are more questions than answers. Uh, the first question for me will be, is it true that the uh, current governor, uh, Governor Fintory, had a nocturnal meeting with some people from INEC? That has to be investigated. Is it true that the allegation about two billion naira, or was it dollars, that was shared uh, by some people uh, who were said to have been given by um, Senator Aisha to um, uh, Binani. Is it true? I don't know. And a lot of people are asking questions. There are so many questions. It's also uh, being asked that is the governor got the authority to be the one that, that will prosecute uh, Hudu Yunus Sa'ari? Um, that's a good question as well. So all the questions need to be answered. Uh, the president-elect is right in saying there should be an, uh, um, what's it called, an investigation and inquiry, and I guess that should be done. But the good news is we've come to the end of that process, which is called supplementary election. Results have been announced, and as we say in Nigeria now, uh, Ruben and Ayo, whatever happens, whoever is unhappy with it, go to court, right? Ruben. <laughs> well, I've been a state actor at the federal level and also at the state level. In Ogun State, in Lagos State. I was a member of the Pioneer Security Board in Lagos State. So when I went to the federal level, it was possible for me to intervene and talk about what had been done in Lagos State. So the issue is this. The president-elect which is, I'm trying to respond to the question you raised, mm -hmm. that, okay, people are saying, where is the president-elect? It was also a, a question that was raised yesterday in uh, Ojineka, this uh, segment. Yes. And I was saying, oh, there is freedom of movement. Yeah. Okay, you have brought it up again this morning. So can we break it down? The number one principle here is that once a man becomes president-elect of Nigeria or of any state, it becomes state property. At this moment, Ashwajubola Ahmed Tinubu, having been declared president-elect of Nigeria, is a property of the Nigerian state. That means I have nothing against people who say, oh, where is our president-elect? Where is our president-elect? Yesterday, on this same program, I made the point that a statement had been issued to say he was going for the rest. Yes. And rest. And, you know, you will spend some time in France. You will then go to Saudi Arabia, where you will take part in, uh, you know, religious rites uh, leading to the end of the uh, Ramadan. The Ramadan is going to end maybe Saturday, a day from now. So Nigerians have the right to say, oh, where is our president elect? The reason they have that right is that once you are declared president-elect, you become a property of the state. State security will follow you around. They will give you accommodation. You will receive briefings from the Nigerian Intelligence Agency, NIA, from DSS, and from other agencies. The only difference is that you cannot take decisions because there is a sitting president and you cannot have two presidents at a time. So the questions that people have raised, where is our president-elect? I hope that when Ramadan ends, that the uh, president-elect of Nigeria will show up, knowing that he has to be on the ground to begin you know, to show that he's already preparing to take office. That's why even in traditional communities in Yoruba land, they have something they call it baby. Mm. When they choose you as king elect, they put you in seclusion. So Bola Ahmed Tinubu has to make himself available, you know, right within the Nigerian territory, having rested, having gone for religious observations. So to that extent, 
I was making the point yesterday that there's freedom of movement. But the point about the security implications also must be stressed. What is the second leg of it? If I was a Bola Tinubu advisor, you know, okay, I will argue in his favor to say that, look, in Africa, Africans are very funny people. When a man is made president-elect or even governor-elect, he will start, uh, you know, misbehaving in a manner that shows that he even wants to take over before the scheduled date. We went through it in 2015. Okay, maybe I shouldn't bring that up, but part of the problem was that there were persons in government in 2015 who thought that the uh, Muhammad Buhari team was overbearing. They were not willing to wait till uh, May 29 to take over. They were all over the place. And that was a bit uh, suffocating. Okay, so maybe what uh, Bola Tinubu's handlers have done is to say, okay, remove yourself from this scene. Don't compete with the president. Wait till May 29 happens. But in that regard, I'm speculating. Now to the third point, as to the statement that he has issued, it doesn't matter who issued the statement. Once the statement is issued in his name, it is his deed. Okay, in law it says it's my deed, or it is not my deed. So it is his deed. And what has he said? He says there should be investigation of the process in Adamawa, not just investigation, a thorough investigation. And that's what all of us are asking for, a thorough investigation. The role of uh, the uh, resident electoral commissioner, the role of the security agencies, and it's a good thing that the head of uh, civil defense has summoned the civil defense uh, commandant in Adamawa to ask him, did you also play a role in this matter? So I think that thorough investigation is important, and that the president, as the appointing authority under the purview of Section 285, sub, sub 1 of the 1999 Constitution, has a responsibility to look into the matter. So I don't agree with uh, Alaji Lai Mohammed saying uh, the president uh, is not going to interfere uh, because he's not involved in Sinek. No, that is not true. Alaji Lai Mohammed is a lawyer. You should just look at the relevant uh, provisions, section 285, sub 1, and also section 6, sub 3 of the Electoral Act 2022. So the appointing authority has a role to play in the matter. And part of the investigation that I believe uh, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinumbu is asking for has to do with the role of that resident electoral commissioner and also the role of other security agencies and also of the political parties. And anybody who tries to perpetrate fraud should be dealt with. So it will be said that the president-elect is uh, on all fours in terms of his submissions with the majority of Nigerians with regard to what happened in Adamawa. However, he raised another issue. He said it was peaceful and he is pleased with that. Okay, that's what everybody said, that it was substantially peaceful. Until a character called Yunusa uh, Ari intervened and tried to derail the process in violation of, of the law, section 646566 of the Electoral Act 2022. Okay, let me leave that. What he has said is fine. He says everybody should work with him when he's sworn in. So it's a statesmanly uh, statement. The only caveat there is that people are saying they want to see him. They don't want their president to be an unidentifiable flying object, a, an object that is missing in action. That is where uh, the uh, uh, argument is. As for the governor of uh, Adamawa State, who has now been re-elected, yes, he went to Abuja to collect the uh, certificate of return, and there, um, well, after expressing his uh, delight, he thanked the security agencies, particularly the military, for helping to save the situation. But uh, he said that he will personally prosecute and deal with uh, Yunus Ahari, uh, the controversial resident electoral uh, commissioner. Well, I hope uh, that uh, Amadou Fintiri has uh, good advisors. If those advisor, advisors know what they are doing, they should tell him that, yes, the Constitution says he's the chief security uh, officer, but uh, the Constitution of Nigeria does not give any governor 
the powers of prosecution. So that's like speaking out of ignorance. It is the police and the inspector general of police himself has taken steps to suspend that, uh, uh, the police commissioner in that regard. And INEC has reported with regard to Yunusa Ari to the appointing authority who is the president of Nigeria. So it's not the governor that will prosecute uh, Adam Awarek. It's not the governor that would uh, worry about the police commissioner and whatever the police did. If he has grievances, if he has lawyers, they should tell him, the place to go is the tribunal, section 285 sub 1. So even having been declared winner, if he has any grievances, let him go to the tribunal. Oh, he can do what INEC did and write uh, to Office of the President or write to the police. Yeah, no, all, all of those issues can be so. put in his uh, petition or cross petition mm. to the tribunal, and they will be so determined. But the uh, INEC has taken up the matter. The Inspector General of Police has taken up the matter. Mm. So the, a governor should not be saying, I will prosecute. He's not a policeman. He's been elected to be governor. <coughs> he should read the Constitution and stay within the province of his functions. Well, on investigations, as has been mentioned, the statement issued and signed according to reports personally by the president-elect is statement, statemently. However, I believe that beyond calling for investigations in Adama State, let's not forget that before the supplementary elections, we had other elections that took place with a number of irregularities. I hope that there would also be a call for investigations into what happened in River State. I hope there would also be a call for an investigation into what happened in Lagos State. I hope there would also be an, a call in the same manner and fervor of an investigation of what happened in Kano State, in some parts of Kano state and in other parts of the country. It is important that when it comes to justice, it is there's equity, equity, so it's equitable. And the same passion and fervor should not only be used for in a partisan way for a particular party or in a particular state. Very critical. Also, um, in terms of the two positions of the president and president-elect um, differing views on the president's um, side, he's saying, I don't want to micromanage. Let's, you know, INEC deal with what they have to deal with. Now, talking about INEC, from reports as at yesterday, even though they say that they have written to the IG of police, the police had said yesterday that they hadn't received a letter or communication from INEC. So I hope that it's not just hearsay and it's not just what's good for the papers or in statements, but that INEC truly leads in the investigation of their resident electoral commissioner in terms of asking that the IG prosecutes and arrests or um, um, convicts if found guilty, Malam Hudu um, Ari. It's very important because we have called on INEC to uphold the institution and so that we can build str um, strong institutions beyond these elections. Elections um, uh, conduction is over now. Now we face the court's tribunals who will probably start in earnest and I hope that INEC will prepare a report as to how they conducted the 2023 elections, lessons learned, and perhaps um, moving forward, actions that ought to be taken.